What's up, fellas? Today we're talking about supplements. Not these supplements, though, because all these are a waste of money. And over the years, I've wasted thousands on supplements that basically did nothing. 95% of them are a waste of money, but there are a few that I recommend here that are actually worth it. That's going to help you get jacked fast and build that sweet, sweet muscle tissue. Now, out of these ones that I recommend, some of you might not want to take them and you need to know how and when to take them to make sure you get the best results. So let's get into it. Now, actually, before we get into it, I want to tell you a little story. So when I was younger, I used to go on the My Protein website. I used to fill my cart up with like loads of things, HMB, ZMA, CLA, loads of different things. And I just couldn't wait for my big parcel to arrive with all my supplements in. And I'm like, yes, this is the time I'm finally going to get jacked. And you know what happened? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing happened. Okay. I don't want that to happen to you, which is why I'm making this video. So let's dive into it. Supplement number one, trend. No, just kidding. Creatine. Okay. <laughs> Best creatine, apparently. Uh, in Bali, there's not many, very many options for supplements. You don't have a good range of choice so this was literally the best creatine I could find creatine how it works is it essentially gives your muscles more energy for force production what can you expect increased strength increased muscle fullness uh, increased recovery uh, creatine it's one of the most scientifically studied supplements out there highly recommend it there's almost no side effects I did get headaches once but that's when I was doing a loading phase so the dose that I recommend for creatine is five grams daily. Um, I did try to do a loading phase once. If you've not heard of that before, it's where you take 20 grams um, for like a week or something like that. And then you drop down to five. I tried that once. I got a headache. Wouldn't recommend it. I, you don't need to cycle off it. To be honest, I think five grams daily is enough. You can get it from your diet alone. Um, it's found in meat and fish. And even though I eat a lot of meat and fish anyway, I still take this because uh, it's cheap and it's effective. And I just want to make sure my creatine levels are as high as possible because it definitely is effective. But it's not my favorite supplement. My favorite is number two. Okay, but not this one. Okay, I've got a natural alternative, which I'll talk about in a second. Pre-workout. I don't like this one because it's got 275 milligrams of caffeine in. I prefer to get my caffeine from other sources, which I'll talk about in a second. <clears throat> when it comes to pre-workout, I like to get a non-stim pre-workout, which means there's no caffeine in there. And I want to focus on like the pump formula. There's a lot of pre-workouts on the market now, especially if you live in the West, you'll have this available to you where there's no caffeine. It's just some of the other ingredients which are going to help with the pump and help with uh, just fuel nutrients to the muscles. Okay, so what do you want to look for in a pre-workout? Sodium and potassium. Uh, creatine is usually in there. Taurine, beta alanine, uh, citrulline or citrulline malate. That's another big one. I think there's a few more. I can't remember them. Maybe I'll put them on screen if I can find them. But yeah, pre-workout, definitely I would have that in my supplement stack. Um one thing that I would add is, you know, directly it's not going to build muscle, okay, but it's going to give you energy in the gym so you, that you're going to have a better workout so that you make more progress, okay? So it's not directly affected to building muscle, but it will give you, help you have a better workout. Instead of a pre-workout with caffeine in, what I like to do is have a coffee and I'll have a coffee with raw honey, so I'm getting some carbohydrates in there and sea salt, natural sea salt, not a processed sea salt not one that's been bleached and uh, has all their natural minerals removed. You want a raw, natural sea salt. Uh, put that in with some honey into, into your coffee, preferably organic. And uh, yeah, that for me is a better pre-workout than this. But if I had the option, if I could get a non-stim pre-workout, I would still have my coffee and I would have that together. That would be the recipe for a great workout. Okay, so you've had a good workout, you've had your creatine, you've had your pre-workout, you've gone in the gym, you've smashed it, it's getting towards the end of the day. You need something to bring yourself down a little bit. Don't reach for the alcohol, obviously. 
magnesium, okay? Magnesium, super underrated. Most people are deficient in magnesium, okay? It's very difficult to get from the diet alone. Uh, with magnesium though, you need to know which type to take because different types do different things. I'll put something on screen. I've seen a cheat sheet about it before, but uh, I prefer to take magnesium glycinate, biglycinate or magnesium three and eight. And I'll typically take between 400 and 500 milligrams, usually one to two hours before bed. Okay. And it's not going to directly stimulate muscle growth, but it will help your body get into a rest and digest state. Magnesium is nature's muscle, uh, is nature's relaxant. Okay. It relaxes the body. Um, if you're in a constant fight or flight state, you're going to find it very difficult to be able to build muscle. So magnesium is going to help with that. The next three on the list, I don't actually have because uh, I can't get good sources in Bali. So that's a good point for any of these supplements is if you can't find a good source for them, I would rather not take them at all because one, you want to make sure you're not wasting money, but two, you don't want to be putting, uh, you know, dodgy ingredients into your body, right? Okay, so the next one, whey protein, okay? Like I said, I don't take it. Uh, when I was younger, I used to take it, but I used to get a very cheap whey protein and I used to mix it with oats and I used to get so bloated, okay? And I didn't know why, you know, I was bloated, I had spots, my brain didn't work and it turned out I was lactose intolerant and gluten intolerant. So the, the whey and the oats first thing in the morning was absolutely not what I should have been eating at all, okay? So look out for that. If you do get any digestive discomfort, I wouldn't recommend any protein powders at all. Uh, I would just opt for getting your protein from food, which is what I prefer to do, to be honest. I prefer to get all my protein from food. But if you struggle to get your calories in, uh, you know, if you struggle to eat enough and you struggle to eat enough protein, protein powder can be a good way to consume extra calories because it's in liquid form. It doesn't fill you up as much. So if you're struggling to meet your protein or your calorie requirements, uh, a protein powder can definitely help. All right. Um, it's not necessary, but if you are going to buy whey protein, make sure that it's organic and it's from grass fed cows. That's how you're going to ensure it's the highest quality. You will pay more for that, but in my opinion, it's worth paying more uh, for any of these supplements, okay? The next one is also a powder. Um, so when you go to the gym, your muscles get stronger at a uh, faster rate than your tendons and ligaments. And over time, if you're not careful, you can be more susceptible to injuries because your muscles are stronger than your tendons and ligaments. So what can you do to prevent that? Collagen, collagen powder. Now there's two types of collagen. Marine collagen, which comes from fish, and bovine collagen, which comes from cows, okay? They're made up of different types of collagen. I'll put a thing on screen if I can find one, but I prefer to take both if I can get a good source for both. Um, whenever I take them, I don't notice massive amounts of improvements in, in muscle or anything like that, but I do notice that uh, my skin looks better. So that's kind of a good proxy that the collagen is working and it's actually doing something. Uh, and that's just a nice extra benefit. No side effects of taking collagen. I haven't noticed. Maybe if you take too much, something might happen, but I usually just follow the recommended doses on the uh, box or I just double them because, you know, I'm quite a large person. So sometimes I just double whatever dose is on the box. Okay. That is collagen. And the final one is a little bit confusing because it's actually a hormone, not a vitamin. I'm talking about vitamin D3. Okay. So vitamin D3, your body naturally produces vitamin D when you go outside and you get sunlight on your skin, your body will naturally produce it. But the problem is depending on where you live in the world, there might not just be enough sun or depending on the type of job that you do, you just might be stuck indoors all day. So vitamin D3, um, you can take in a supplement form. Um, but you want to be careful with this one because a lot of people online recommend that vitamin D3, uh, you know, you can just take a synthetic vitamin D tablet and that's going to be the same as actually getting outside and getting sunlight. It's not going to be the same guys. Okay. Uh, there's actually a little bit of controversy right now. I'll put a thing on screen if I can 
can find an image of people talking about why you shouldn't take vitamin D3. So with this one, uh, I, I would definitely do a test first before you start taking vitamin D or magnesium actually, start doing a test first. The first time I took magnesium, I knew I was deficient in it because of how I felt afterwards. Like I was just, I just, was just in the middle of a vegan diet. I took magnesium a couple of hours before bed and I was just lying on my bed and I just felt like I was sinking into the mattress. I was like, whoa, okay, this feels super strong, like some kind of like pharmaceutical drug. So I knew then that I was deficient in that. So if you take something and you notice a big effect from it, chances are you might be deficient. But the safest option is to always get a test done first, know where your levels are at, and then take it if you need it. If you don't need it, don't take it because you're probably just going to waste your money. And plus, you don't want to put another substance in your body if uh, you don't need to. Okay, they are the five, six supplements to get jacked fast and build that muscle. But I just want to say something, guys. If you are struggling with, uh, if you're short on money right now, do not spend money on supplements. There's far better investments you can make right now. Save that money and, and spend it on food and then also spend it on knowledge. Uh, obviously you can watch YouTube videos for free, but you can buy training programs. You can hire a coach, wink, wink. Links are in the description. Uh, or you can spend it on apps like uh, for tracking your calories and macros. For those things, you're gonna get way greater return on your investment. You're gonna make, make far big greater gains than you would do from these supplements. These supplements right here, they are worth it, but they make like one or two percent difference. Whereas if you just focus on the main things like your training, nutrition, sleep, lifestyle, they're the big rocks. That's going to make most of the difference. And if you eat real foods and you get good sleep and you train properly and your lifestyle is not crazy, you will make progress. So, so if you're not making progress right now, it's not because you don't have these supplements. It's more likely because of one of those things are messed up. If you want some help with this, I do coaching. All the links are in the description down below. And other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Go get jacked and I'll see you in the next one.